time is it? I have to make the camping reservations. They open at 8 a.m. Okay, countdown. Three, two, one. Oh, I still didn't get it. <laughs> Hi. So we all know that having the right campsite can really make a difference between having a really bad time and the most epic time ever. So today is the day I'm going to be planning out all of our camping trips for the summer. Well, spring and summer. Um, so I'm going to be trying out some new apps today. Um, I have a few destinations in mind. I do have three trips already planned. Um, the whole process has gotten more and more cutthroat. <laughs> Who would have thought the cutthroat world of camping? But um, if you don't know, if you're like from the older generations where you just kind of just, well, I almost said wung it. <laughs> if you're from the older generations where you just kind of decided to go camping and you packed everything up and you just drove and there would be a site and you would just be there, um, that's there's not a lot of that anymore. Now everyone's um, reserving ahead, which is, I think, very nice. A lot of people have mixed emotions about it. Um, and yeah, now you have to be really on the ball if you have a specific campground or site that you even want to stay in. Um, you can reserve, generally, generally the rule is you can reserve six months out. Um, so for example, if it's February 9th um, and you want August 10th, you have to wait till the next day before you can reserve that site. And, um, yeah. And so <laughs> what I found is that people are just as excited as me to stay at these, um, you know, a little more nicer sites and they're, uh, right on the ball, <laughs> just like me. It's not just me surprising. So, um, a lot of them, you have to like kind of look ahead of time and see what time, what time of the day the campsites, the next campsites are released. Um, for example, I think that most of the DNR website, um, the campsites on there that I've seen so far, they release at 8 a.m. So, <laughs> so yesterday I had a specific site um, that I wanted to try to get on the river and I could see that there was one, one site that was going to be available on the specific day that I wanted to be there. So at 7.55 in the morning, I had the page pulled up, ready to push the button as soon as it turned 8 a.m. And I, yeah, <laughs> the drama was intense. And so I was there poised over my computer, watching the clock for it to turn 8 a.m. I pushed the button and I was too late. So I was literally, must have been one or two seconds too late. So that is how intense sometimes it can be. So um, I'm going to be trying out a few different apps today. Um, I've heard a lot about iOverlander. Um, and then I found another one. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. But um, I just downloaded those. I'm going to start looking at those. And because, um, yeah, I really want an epic summer. Last last summer, um, I had some good camping trips, but not, um, not, I wasn't able to, I had medical problems, so I wasn't able to get out as much as I wanted to. Long story short, let's go on this journey and you can see kind of some of these apps that I'm using, um, and I'll let you know how I like them and, uh, let's book some campsites. All right. So here I am on the iOverlander app. Uh, I just pulled it up on my laptop cause it's sometimes easier to just look on here. Um, you can have it on your phone as well. But, so this is my first time looking at it. Um, I do know this area, so I'm kind of curious, since this is kind of my hometown, like what's even here? And so it has places, it tells you where there's different camping. Um, let's see, it tells you there's a Walmart there, the different parks. Um, 
think this maybe is free parking. Um, and this, I didn't, I think is kind of cool that tells you where you can get showers. And this is a place that, you know, I know, and I didn't even realize they had showers here. This is the Nara Nature um, Center. And then it, you know, gives a little GPS. Uh, last time it was verified. Um, tells you a little bit about it, how much the shower is, things like that. So um, I can see this being super helpful for anybody that's doing overlanding or camping or just road tripping. And then once you click on it, um, for more information, you can uh, check in and that lets people know that, you know, you verified it. Um, you can add it to your favorites. Um, you know, people can leave little reviews on it. There's photos, which I think is super helpful. Like, obviously, this is a really nice looking little place. Um, they tell you kind of how much it was. So a lot of people have actually stopped here, which is kind of cool. I never, never knew this was here. Um, tells you it's hot showers, um, things like that. So um, I think that's really interesting. And then for example, going up towards Copper Harbor, um, again, tells you, you know, the basic campsites where there's a dump station and water, and then it gives little tips out here um, for little pull-off sites. So that's, um, let's see, High Rock Bay. A lot of people know about that. Um, so let's get some more details and again gives you the gps location photos the last people that were there so you can kind of see what it looked like um, a lot of people can say you know how to get there or whether it was safe or you know things like that um, tells you okay it was windy examples of uh, different places you can stay so um, i like this site so far so finding camp spots can be a lot of work um, it also can be part of the fun but um, I find it kind of frustrating sometimes. I Generally, I start on Google Maps, um, kind of go to the general area and like zoom in, like, like I type in um, to search campgrounds and it brings up a lot. There's a lot on there, um, which is nice. Um, in general, I have a good experience with Google Maps um, and then you can click on each one and it'll generally give you some pictures and reviews from other people um, and then you can click on if there's a website, um, it'll tell you right in the description, right on Google Maps, click on the website, and then it'll bring you to that campground's website, and you can either make reservations there, or um, in about half the time they are, they do say first come, first serve. Um, but more and more, I'm finding that they are um, reservable online, which I, I personally do like, because um, I like to plan ahead of time. Um, especially when you have kids, like you can't just always just drive and like hope you're going to find a spot um, that has toilets and things. I mean, my kids are can uh, go to the bathroom outside and, you know, we generally bring water and all the things. But, um, you know, it's just nice. I like to plan ahead, especially when we're driving for three or more hours. You can't just all of a sudden come back home or, you know, and a lot of places are really cracking down on um, just camping in a parking lot. So um, that's not really an option anymore. So I did see some reviews about campspot.com, which supposedly has, is kind of like a, a hub and then you can kind of see what all's in there. So I'm going to check that one out. I'm a little doubtful. Okay, so they do have an app, which is on my phone, but just for the ease of showing you, um, I'm, I pulled it up on my, my laptop. So, um, let's say we want to find a spot, say April, well, a lot of campgrounds aren't open yet. So let's just randomly choose like the 14th through the 16th. Okay, we'll just say two adults and around, we'll say Houghton. Um, so okay, so it is pulling up, we have the Union River and the Porkies, we have all the way in Marquette Tourist Park Campground, Lake Ugibic, which is really far the other direction, Rippling River. So mm, it does pull up a few. Um, so I can see how this maybe would be useful. Um, let's see if we can get a map here. So looks like it doesn't have a ton. Like if we were coming to this area like we just showed on the I Overlander, um, yeah, there's not, McLean's is not there, uh, Fort Wilkins is not there, and those are like major campgrounds. Um, doesn't look like Twin Lakes is there either. So, 
So far, not super impressed with this one just right off the bat. Um, we are planning a trip to head over towards Tequamanon um, and through Gwyn, Munising area. Not Gwyn, Munising area. Um, so, yeah, like this area, I would like to see a lot more campgrounds, so I'm not seeing anything there, but let's try here. here. Yep, not pulling up anything. So, yeah, I was rather doubtful about this site. Um, doesn't seem to have a lot. Maybe it's maybe it's meant more for people in the bigger bigger areas for the UP. Um, I think right now it's going to be a lot of like Google Maps, which Google Maps will then send you you know to each individual site. Um, a lot of the places that we go, like the state parks, are going to be through the DNR website um, or else um, recreation.gov. I'm very used to the DNR website now because I've been using it for the past five years pretty regularly. A lot of people do complain about it. Um, I do find it difficult because if you're not specifically, you know, like for example, the Porcupine Mountains, um, if you're trying to find one of the cabins there, you have to actually go into the back country and then the cabins will pull up. So there's a little, little tick tricks. Wow tips and tricks. There we go. Um, as far as that. And then I know when I was trying to find something somewhere, um, yeah, not everything pulls up. Um, you have to like really like select all the options. There's like overnight lodging. So then you pull up cause it'll say nothing's available. But then if you click on the different options, then stuff will be available. It's, it can be very frustrating. I've, <laughs> like I said, I just know all the tricks now. Um, so, and then there's recreation.gov, um, which I think is what we had to go through if we were trying to find spots um, at Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. Um, and, you know, so that, at first when I jumped on there, I thought that was really hard to navigate because I was used to the DNR site. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think everyone realizes the amount of planning that comes in when you're when you're planning a camping trip like obviously you have to plan like all your gear and your food and stuff like that but when it comes to just making reservations and trying to figure out like the distance and like what all you want to see like now I have several sites reserved but now I have to figure out like where we're gonna explore in the meantime how many nights do we want um, things like that so <laughs> it's a whole process um, and in general, like Josh and I will sit down at night and we're trying to find stuff and um, it's fun. Like it's very, very, very much fun. We have a lot of fun, <laughs> but before we know it, it's two hours have gone by and we're just like browsing campgrounds and, you know, our eyes feel like they're melting out of our heads <laughs> at the end. And um, I think we just have to keep reminding ourselves that it's fun and it's part of the adventure. Um, so far I haven't found a really easy way. And then you're trying to click on each site to kind of see my big thing is I don't want to be next to a bunch of people. So, um, and a lot of campgrounds are frustrating to me because I can't really see, like I need like a 360 degree view if possible, or just tell me in the description, like, you know, there's trees between you and the next person. Like that would be very helpful to me um, personally. Um, some people like to be just slotted in right next to each other. Um, I don't. So that's a big, big thing that I look for um, when we're reserving sites. Like, um, yeah, I will go without electricity um, if, if I'm in a, a wooded area as opposed to having electricity, you know, if we're taking the pop-up um, and being right next to people. Because I just, I don't, I can be right next to people and live in an apartment. So um, I'm going camping to, to get away and like hear nature and things like that. So anyway, a little bit of a rant, but, um, I'm thinking that I may start doing, um, actual like campground tours when I'm at each of these campgrounds, just do like a campground walkthrough and it'll probably be just like a whole video in itself and just trying to show like, um, say 122, 124, for example, and kind of like seeing, obviously there's going to be people camping in each of the spots, but I feel like that'll be really helpful for a lot of people. Obviously be very boring to anyone that's not planning on staying in that campground. So I might just do an individual um, video for each of the campgrounds um, and just do like literally walking through so you can kind of see like how close you are to the river if possible, um, how close this one is to the bathroom. Um, so I don't know, let me know if you think that would be helpful. I think that would be helpful to me. So. Um, not sure how many views it would get, but I just want to be helpful to everybody when they're 
you know, trying to do the whole campground process and reservations. And um, I have a few other ideas. Like I wanna, I'm thinking about maybe um, starting actually like a blog type, like website type thing where I can like have uh, like downloadable or printable um, camping checklists and things like that. Um, so if you have any ideas, let me know. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get back to, uh, finding my next adventure. I hope this was helpful. With all that being said, uh, in general, even just being outside camping in any form is still better than a day spent at work. So try to make the best of it. Even if you are running behind and you're not able to make reservations, uh, still try to get out there. There is always the option of forestry land, national forest, um, just look up the various rules for your state land, things like that in your area, um, or just go sit at the park. At least you'll be outside.